Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing this uh, Donna Circle Looper pedal right here. Now this is going to be an interesting um, test drive for me because I've owned looping pedals three to five times the price of this one. So I was really curious to see what this pedal could do. It's got two switches, it's got the record button and it's got the stop start button. And that for me is really important. I think you need that in a looping pedal. Now I'm going to timestamp this video, so check out the links below if you want to jump ahead, because I'm going to cover quite a bit. I'll also explain where the more expensive loopers uh, went wrong for me. In particular, the TC Electronics X4. I ended up owning uh, two of those units, basically through Perseverance. I also owned the Singular Sound Aero Looper, a great looper for the right person. It's got plenty of functionality, but for me, it was just too complicated. And of course, just leave a comment or ask any questions below, and please like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate that. Okay, so let's get started and let's see what this thing can do. So it came in this special box uh, with a USB cable, and I guess that's for transferring recorded ideas. There's no power supply and doesn't take batteries either, but most of you will have that covered. No biggie, I'm sure. The user manual, I like the look of this. It's not an encyclopedia. When you look at the Donna Circle Looper, you have to think of it with a line down the middle. The right side is all the rhythm section stuff, the drum machine and the metronome, and on the left-hand side, that's where all the looping happens. Cool, so that's pretty simple. So let's start with the looping stuff. There's three functions on this side of the pedal. Memory, where the loops live. Level, which is the volume of the loop. And a fade out option. To change modes, you just click this dial. When you let go, you can then adjust the settings by rotating the dial. And you can see this reflected on the LCD screen. Let's start with the memory mode. You get 40 individual memory slots to record loops with four minutes of recording time available on each slot. After you've recorded a loop or idea, the slot is labeled as recorded. So you clearly know if anything is living on that particular slot. Here's a demo of me recording an entire song form, intro, verse, chorus, which ran for about 90 seconds. I engage the looper on beat one, that's the record dub button. Then I stop the looper with the other button on beat one at the end of the form. It stops the recording here, but continues playing. You can visually see how long the loop is in minutes and seconds, and you've got a visual representation of that with this circle moving around on the LCD screen. I fast forwarded the middle of this demo to the end of the loop so you're not sitting through the entire 90 seconds. Down below El Paso lies what is. So let's see how this dub function works on the pedal. Now I put together a little demo so you can see the process I went through when I was using it. So once I'm happy with this first part, I'll engage the looper. And that gives me the first loop. Now when I hit the dub button, and I didn't actually have anything in mind to play, so I just let it roll around a few more times and, and get something together. So 
So once I've got something, I engage the dub button and put that down. So I just engage the dub button again and that overdub will continue playing with the first one. Now, if you want to undo the dub that you just did, you can. You just hold the button down. And then that one's gone. And then I'm just back to the first loop. Now, let's talk about the fade out feature on, the, on this pedal. It's really simple. You've got a five second option and to be honest I found that you've just really just got to set it to five seconds um, for it to create some kind of fade and this is what that sounds like I wouldn't say it's very long it didn't seem like five seconds to me and this is another thing that I noticed with the TC pedal you couldn't get a very long fade out going on that pedal either. I actually think that 10 to 15 seconds would be better. So in my mind, you've just got to set this to five seconds to get any sort of effect or just not have it on at all. Let's take a look at the right side of the pedal, the rhythm section side. So it's quite easy accessing either side of the pedal. I mean, if you go back here, you're in the uh, loop side and then you're back here in the rhythm side. And you've got three lights as well. So when you're on the top one select, that's where the groove patterns live. Now there's 10 styles with 10 loops to each style. Now one of those styles is the metronome. So I guess in a sense there's nine. And if you wanna scroll through uh, those loops, I'll just play one first. Right now, if I want to scroll through those loops, I go to 10, and then we're on to the next style, which is rock. We'll go through those. Metal, disco, funk, blues. The 6 8 one's quite nice. Hip hop, jazz. I'll, I'll, I won't play all of these. I'll play a few, though, just to give you an idea of the, of the sound quality. And then at one, we're at the metronome. The metronome I like the sound of because it's just a, a couple of sticks. To me, that's not an annoying sound. Now, if you want to adjust the volume of that any or any of these loops, um, you just go to the, sec the second one, which is volume, and you just rotate this dial. Easy stuff. Oops, pretty loud. All right. And of course, you've got a BPM. If you want to change the BPM, you just roll, roll that across either way. And there's your BPM. Now, inputs and outputs. Two inputs and two outputs. I guess if you want to go stereo, there's quite a few different things you could do there. It's got this extension control input as well, which is for a foot switch, which would even open up more functionality, which leads me to the merger control hold for delete button. This one here that changes color to green. Uh, I haven't used this, but you can merge the drum machine as you're looping. So this is where I suspect there's even more to this looper.
Now I'll clarify why some of these other pedals didn't work out for me. The main one was the TC Electronics X4 Looper. It was just a can of problems. I tried two of them because I thought the first one might be a lemon, but it seemed that a lot of people were having the same problems that I was having. The lights would freeze up. You would have to update the firmware via a computer. And I seemed to be doing that all the time, which was really annoying. And of course, if this happens at a gig, you're in trouble. And it did, it happened to me twice. So that was it for me. I let that one go. So I moved on to the Aero Looper by Singular Sound. And for some people, that's probably a great looper, but it was just too complicated for me. And I couldn't really justify spending that amount of money. Now with the Boss pedal that I tried, I don't really want to make comparisons there other than the fact that the circle loop is cheaper. And for me, it was easier to use, being able to use the circle looper straight away. Without having to look at that manual, I was just able to get straight into it. So that's the Donna Circle Looper, guys. I think it's a great pedal. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I mean, for the money, certainly gonna be recommending it um, to my students. And anyone who wants to, to get into looping as a starting point, you know, I think it's, you know, more than enough. I'd certainly take it out on a gig for what I do. Um, but I think I'll probably be using it a lot um, to practice and improvise and just noodling around and coming up with ideas. I think it's, it's a great way to get creative. But yeah, what I do is pretty simple. It's just usually one rhythm part. Hopefully I play it in time and it works out because it's really, Looping's all about timing. You really got to have your timing together to really get some fun out of these things, you know? I think this is a great practice tool. I'm going to be recommending it to my students because I just think it's great to have that ability to record something quickly without having to plug into your recording setup. I mean, you still got to plug in, but it kind of gives you that instant recording of having someone to play with, really, and you can work on improvising and and, and putting parts together and seeing what works. So as a practice tool, I think it's, you know, invaluable to have something like this. And in a sense, with those 40 memory banks and four minutes per spin, you've almost got like a notepad where you can just get down a lot of ideas and if you're not sure you want to keep something or clear it out, you can always just um, upload them to your computer and keep those ideas and then start again. So. For what it does, everything that it's got in at this pedal, uh, I don't see how you can go wrong really. So thanks to the guys at Donna for sending this out. Uh, I think they've done a, a great job of, um, of keeping the design simple. As I've said, some of them are, are, are really complicated, you know, when you get this encyclopedia of a manual to sort of, to nut through it, that's just, that's just me. Now I didn't really cover the merge uh, button here in the middle, which basically combines the drum machine uh, with the looper. So it actually has more functionality. Uh, it's got the um, extension for the extension control so you can have another switch and I'm sure that opens up even more possibilities with this pedal. But for me it's it's doing more than enough already. I don't really need to, to know any more for what I do. I do get a small kickback if you decide to buy the pedal um, through the link below uh, and if you do get it uh, just send me an email and I'll hook you up um, with my looping course. So please subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a comment below. And if you've got any questions, just give me a shout. I'd love to try and help you out. All right, guys, have fun and uh, I'll see you next time.